testing a Southworth steam pump on the bench in the workshop. This model steam powered boiler feed water pump was bought somewhat prematurely by my friend James Evans via eBay to be fitted to the 5 inch gauge Sweet Pea locomotive that I'm currently rebuilding. Or should that be resurrecting? The question is, does it work and if so, how well? I have a very small turntable. It's not motorised, I have to turn the parts by hand but it's a good way to show the close-up details of the pump. The first thing I notice is this is very different to any other 6-inch steam pump from Southworth I've ever seen. The rocking arm and the way the valve works is very different to what you would normally see on one of these pumps. Very shortly I'm going to connect the airline to this pump and see if it works, but before that it's a thorough oiling of every moving part. And not just the external parts, I'm pumping some oil into the steam inlet pipe and very shortly I will be pumping some oil into the water cylinder at the bottom. I'd like to mention at this stage that these water pumps are very difficult to make and you need to be quite a good engineer to make one. I used to sell these commercially but I didn't build them. A friend of mine who was disabled and a time served engineer used to build them as just a bit of a hobby and to make a little bit of money. And even with a perfectly made pump, I used to have problems with them initially. As you can clearly see, this one sticks at the bottom of the stroke. I know what this is, it's a very common fault. The problem is, inside the pump, and you can't see it, is a thing called a shuttle piston. It's a little bobbin that goes up and down. And that's what makes these pumps self-starting. And this is sticking at one end. When I increase the pressure, it works okay, because it doesn't stick but it must be slightly tight at one end, which is a good sign, I suppose. It means the fit of the shuttle piston is good. I've had a few emails from a chap who has one of these pumps, and the emails are getting more frequent. He was going to send it to me to repair it, but then he changed his mind and had a go at it himself. And then he asked me again, after he fiddled with it to no avail. Time will tell whether I ever receive this pump to repair, what I'm doing at the moment is injecting some lubricating oil into the water inlet at the bottom. The problem with these pumps, if you run them without any water in them, the bottom cylinder can develop problems. And here's one of the problems, the gland is blowing very badly. As I mentioned earlier, the construction of this pump is quite different to a normal Southworth Engines 6 inch boiler feed pump. Mechanically, it's an improvement on other pumps that I've seen previously. It's a bit deceiving because at the moment the oil isn't really bubbling out of the gland too much. That's because I don't have my fingers over the inlet and outlet. And because the pump's been pumping for a while, the volume of oil in the bottom cylinder is not so much. I left it running for a while and injected some more oil in an attempt to soak the gland packing material with oil because I presume it to be dry, but it made no difference. I need to repack the gland. On these pumps, the glands are usually O-rings. The steam cylinder didn't suffer from the same problem, but the water cylinder gland was always leaky. Even the ones my friend used to build me, and he built them exactly to the drawing, always leaked. And what I used to have to do was remove the gland cover and wind one turn of graphited yarn over the top of the O-ring, and that fixed it. What follows is a clip from a video I made a few years ago showing the Southworth range of pumps, which these days are owned and sold by Blackgates Engineering. This is a 6 inch vertical Southworth pump, and even a pump like this is more than capable of feeding the boiler of a 5 inch gauge locomotive. You will see that the valve mechanism and the rocking arm is entirely different to the one on the pump that I've currently got on the bench. It's a different design entirely. And the gland on the water cylinder is also very different. This one looks like a standard stuffing gland. When my friend James first told me that he'd bought one of these pumps online, I shuddered. But thankfully it's okay. It only sticks at one end and needs the gland repacking. That's what I'm about to do. These are very small 10BA nuts fitted to the two studs on the gland itself. First of all, been very careful not to shear them off. I tightened the nuts slightly to push the gland further down into the hole, but to no avail, it still leaked. 
At this stage, I thought that the problem was the wrong size O-ring, which by now would be worn. Removing these nuts was quite demanding. They are so small, I picked this one up off the bench using my telescopic magnet. While I'm showing this really tedious job, I'd like to mention that at one time when I was selling these pumps, which were built exactly to the drawing, I phoned Peter Southworth, obviously before he died. And he was not a happy man when I mentioned about the size of the glands and said, there are thousands of these pumps built, how can you say that they are wrong? When Blackgates took over Southworth, I mentioned it to Phil, the male half of the partnership. Phil's a very good engineer and at first he looked at me a bit funny out of the corner of his eye. But he said, well, let's have a look into it. And he started measuring things and he said, do you know, you're right. I assume that Blackgate's engineering changed the diameter of the O-ring provided with the kits, but I can't be sure of that, because I never revisited the subject. This is a much better way of doing it, a proper gland down into the cylinder cover. Here I'm removing some very dry graphited yarn, fitted in there a long time ago. And the special tool that I'm using is bent up from some MIG welding wire. After a quick wipe with the toothbrush to remove any dirt around the area, it's time to repack the gland, and this time I'm using a modern equivalent of graphited yarn, which is Teflon coated yarn. I'm initially pushing it into place with the piece of wire. I know this is going to work because I measured the length of Teflon coated yarn using the original that I removed from here. When the piece of Teflon coated yarn was fully in position in the gland, I pushed it in a little bit tighter using the point of a small screwdriver. It's really important to make sure that you don't trap any of the yarn between the hole around the piston rod and the gland fitting itself. That's the easy bit done. Now for the more difficult part, refitting the 10BA nuts. It took a while to get them centred on the studs, but I got there in the end. Because this is a water pump, not an oil pump, I need to test it using water. I sat the pump in a tub with sufficient water to just cover the water inlet, and then I admitted some air. This will do two things, apart from flushing out the oil, which I don't want in there. I don't want the oil to be pumped into the boiler. The main reason for this test is to test the functionality of the water cylinder gland, and it appears to work perfectly. I can stop the pump by applying a lot of finger pressure to the water outlet, and still some water's coming out. I need to test this pump under pressure, so I'll probably use my steam engine test plant and pipe the pump into the circuit to replace the injector temporarily. In this slow motion clip, you can see that one of the pump's outlet strokes is slightly more powerful than the other. This will be down to the ball valve arrangement in the chest of the water cylinder. The main thing is, the pump is double acting, and that's what it's supposed to be. Some water exits the water cylinder at every stroke, that's fine. And that is it for me, this pump should be fine on the sweet pea when I get round to fitting it, but there's a lot of work to do before I get to that stage when it needs a pump. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.